What's up, everyone? It's DV, and I am back in Skyblox. Actually, it's not Skyblox anymore. It's called Roblox Island. So they actually renamed the game because of a DMCA kind of issue where there was copyright issues, and they didn't really want the game to be taken down by Roblox because of some name concerns. So the game has actually been renamed to Roblox Islands, which is, you know, it's kind of fitting because we do have islands, and that's kind of our thing, right? So we're on islands. So I'm here to show you about 20 or so tips that you might actually find interesting. Some are going to be new to you. Some are are not so first thing I'm going to show you is a cool little effect on the vending machines you just need a colored block something like this and you can you know use green as well if you want and so I've got like this bottom floor here is for selling up top is for buying so when you buy I can make it so like you know maybe it shows green in the background when you buy so you can see I've actually got like this kind of background here you can actually customize the texture of your vending machine you just need to make sure it's just one block kind of in between so you just need one block a little separation here and I think you can even do two blocks out I, I don't don't remember if you can but I think you can and it'll still work and then you can have like red for selling or something if you really wanted to um, you could do all kinds of stuff with this so you can texture it brown whatever colors maybe you have a theme for your island and you want it to be specific to a color you can just theme everything like this I don't I'm not like a huge fan of this but it could be helpful at times if you want to be very clear to someone when they're in buy mode or sell mode and you can also do just one column too it still works basically puts focus on the vending machine you're in too because when you're in like this you can still see everything else whereas when you're in this you only see that vending blocks everything else it's kind of cool so another feature i want to share most of you already know about this but if you don't you can actually block an area off with your iron door so the iron doors are owners only so it's kind of cool but another thing you can do with this is you can actually trap users so if you saw my last video that i posted before this one i actually trapped a bunch of players it was hilarious but essentially what you do here is something like this and then you need to put a block on top so we'll just climb that up we'll put a block over that and that way when i respawn in I'm actually trapped. So I can't, if I were a new user, I couldn't get out. So it's a good way if you're like, hey, everyone, hold on. I don't really want you exploring my island. Stuff's not ready yet. You can kind of block them into like a little cage for a bit. So another thing I want to show you similar to this, which is respawn related, is I want to show you something about this platform. See this platform up there? With Roblox, the way this works is see when I teleport to my island. So if I go like this, and I click that little compass to teleport to my island, visit my island. If I go here, what's happening is they're using a C frame. This is a little technical, but they're using a C frame to teleport my position to an absolute coordinate so that no matter what happens, I'm gonna teleport there regardless of whether or not there's blocks here, right? So if there's blocks here and I visit, I'm stuck. But if you notice, it's a little different when you jump off the island. So if I jump off, you'll notice I'm, top, I'm on top of this, right? Because there's two differences. This right here, when I jump off, it's actually teleporting me to a spawn point, whereas the other one's actually teleporting me to an exact location. It's totally different but it does a similar position they just it's just it's just coincidental that they have it in the same position but they actually are handled completely differently so that's why whenever you jump off here and, and spawn points the way spawn points work is that it's always going to send you the furthest top position of an object so it, in it but it does have limitations so you see this up here if i were to bring this down so that it's close to my head if i were to jump off again I'm gonna actually go on to the top of the platform here. See how I'm, on, I'm now on the top because this is the highest point right now. The problem, the only reason why this didn't actually teleport me right here is the, my bounding box for my character. See how I'm like jumping, see the gap right there? I'm actually, I'm actually inside, I'm actually inside of a collider but my body bounding box, like my actual character is much taller. That's why when I jump like this, See how it's like colliding? So the highest point for respawning is gonna be above this. So what's cool about this is you can actually turn this on and off. So if I wanted to like, you know, if I'm like, hey, I've got a, like a secret island up there, you know, or maybe for example, if I'm on my island and I don't want anyone to go to my like moon base over here. So it's like my little, my, that's my like home, right? That's my sphere. That's almost like my little death star. If I only wanna be the one to be able to get up there, I could just kind of turn this on and off so I can do something like this, right? And then I can go and run over there. Or if I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have some visitors and I don't want anyone you know, up there, all I gotta do is take out a couple blocks and then I'm in good shape because this, I'm clearly, I can jump. So I'm far away enough from that that I can actually just, I'll just teleport right there. But if I want it to actually work, you just add some more blocks and you can use glass panes. I would use that or any kind of glass blocks because it looks, I think it looks cleaner, but now it's enabled. So I can go and turn it off again. So that's just a really, really simple way to do this. So another tip I have is you can see my bright lights over here. They're crazy. And I get I get asked about these all the time. Like pretty much every day I get asked about these. Like, hey, how did you do that? And all it is is sand blocks with torches. So I'll show you real quick. So you get sand. And as long as you put some torches nearby, 
they'll, they'll light up. And similar to sea lanterns, sea lanterns do something similar to that. And you can just kind of stack these. The, it gets brighter and brighter. The more of these, you know, you add, it gets crazy. So you can just add a bunch of torches and pretty much everything will eventually glow. But these are cheaper than sea lanterns. I've got a sea lantern here and it does pretty much the same thing. So this is a sea lantern and you, you can put a torch next to that and you can, you know, put another one next to it to get it brighter. Sand actually does just as good of a job as sea lanterns. The only difference between sand and a sea lantern though, a sea lantern does have a little bit of like a glow to it um, already. So it'll glow on its own without any help. So another thing I want to show you is input output infinite storage for load balancers. I've shown you this in the past with like, I think a couple days ago or so, but so if you haven't watched that video, go ahead and check it out. And the, the link is in the description. So if you want to watch that on how to do infinite storage, you can, but as just a reminder, you can actually daisy chain these, um, pretty well. So it's, it's, and it's, and it's pretty OP. I'm not going to go into full detail on this, um, on like different designs for this, but I will daisy chain a couple of these and show you how they work. And then um, you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about here based on just watching. So I've got like a, a industrial chest right here. And then I've got the input output chest here. And so what can happen is if you have like autos, so maybe you have like an auto farm for coal or iron or maybe like food processors or anything, you can just keep adding these um, chests over and over and over and over. And what's nice is they won't move, like items don't move out of them until they fill up. So if you look at this, see how I just did that? Now things are starting to fill up over here. So if I add another item to this, see how, you know, if, as long as it fills up, then it can, then it moves. So the nice thing about this is if you had like 30 of these or 40 or 50 of these and granted, who's going to really do that. But if you did imagine how long it's going to take for it to fill up. So it's not infinite, but it's really close to infinite storage because you could just keep daisy chaining these. And on top of that, you can spread them out. So you don't have to have them like really, really long like this. You can actually do load balancers. So you can put like five of these across and then just merge them into one eventually through um, right turns and, and just layering things correctly. So there's height to it. I'm not going to show you in detail on how to do that in this video, but just imagine what you can do with these chests. So another tip I have for you is star fruit does not get oily. It does not get oily. So check this out. These are all in the chest. These are all from the conveyors. These are not oily at all. So I'm going to go ahead and empty that. So what that means is you can actually use, if you remember my old six design video that included some designs in them for auto farms, you can check that video out. It will actually show you some auto farms for onions and uh, before the washer update, basically it was before we had oily farms and that video is still relevant for star fruit. So you can use any of those designs to your heart's desire for star fruit. Another thing that's really cool is they actually made it so that you can just hold down the F key. So I'm gonna go and hold down F right here and I'm just gonna drag my mouse around. So they, the devs did make it so that we can actually just drag, drag, drag. And then I can, just, I can even do something like this. And it just saves our, our time for harvesting. I'm probably still gonna use clicking most of the time just out of habit, but it's kind of a cool feature. So another thing I wanna tell you is a tip for making a lot of money quick in this game. Instead of selling these little craftable items like these resources individually, like everyone's got a habit of doing, including myself, I'm, I'm guilty, but I've, I've been kind of breaking this habit a little bit lately. So for example, the pearl and these shards are really cheap, right? So these shards are going for about 5,000 each. And so like 200 of these is about a million at 5,000. And then you add like a pearl for like 50,000, 60,000, probably about 50,000. So you're looking at about a million 50, while the sword itself that you can craft these with, so this sword over here that you can craft this thing's going for about two mil right now upwards to two mil between one and two million some some people are trying to sell for even more i don't know i don't know how they're doing it but they are doing it and imagine if you're just to craft that instead and make uh, a couple million off of something that's costing you about a million right so over time now some people are selling the shards for like a thousand a piece so imagine you're looking at about two hundred thousand instead of a you know a million you're looking at something that's like two hundred fifty thousand and even if you sold it for a million you're still making seven hundred fifty thousand per sword so that's one example another great example for making a lot of profit off something is this this vending machines so vending machines go for about two hundred thousand night and day so you can sell those anytime for two hundred thousand you know you can always bump it up down to like 190 if you really really want to i actually buy them at one um 180 and that's just because a lot of people are willing to sell these to me at that but it typically i also buy them at two hundred thousand. they do not cost any they don't cost anywhere near one hundred eighty thousand to make because all you need is some crystallized iron you need some gold and you need some sticky gears. You need five green sticky gears. You can buy green sticky gears for, right now I'm selling them at almost 4,000, but imagine if they were 4,000 each, that's 12,000 coin, plus the cost of your crystallized iron, which is about, you can get it for about 70 to 80,000, sometimes 100,000, but even, let's just assume it's 100,000. So you've spent, let's see, four times five. So you spent 20,000 plus 100,000. So it's 120,000 for something you're gonna probably be able to sell for 200,000. You're making 80,000 per vending machine off of that versus trying to sell these parts by themselves. So anytime you have all the parts 
parts to be able to make something, just make that something and then sell assuming there's some kind of demand or market for it. Now, if it's something like the food processors or washing machines that are really, really expensive and hard to sell, don't even bother. So for example, the crystallized gold is, you know, we're selling it for 500,000 up here. A lot of people are trying to sell these for even 800,000. But when you need three of these to be able to make a food processor, it makes zero sense because we're selling the food processor for about a million. And even if we sell the food processor for 1.2 million or 1.3 million, it still doesn't make sense, logical sense that you would actually buy crystallized gold to be able to make those and try to make a profit. If anything, you're going to take a loss, a heavy loss, if you were to try to combine these things. But an exception is maybe like, you know, pink sticky gears. So pink sticky gears, you can get for about 150,000 to 200,000 a piece. So assume you're doing, you know, the 200,000 for each of these. Three of those would be 600,000, right? So let's see, what do we need for a smelter? We need three pink sticky gears and some cheap steel rods. So you're in, and there's, and they're going right now for about 650,000 on the discord as of this video. And I think they're going up in value. So imagine, Imagine if I spent 600,000 to make a smelter and made 50,000 off of it and smelters will sell night and day again. Everyone wants a smelter and they are going up. I think they're going to probably go up to about 800,000 because everyone needs iron. So that is a great way for you to make some money. And on top of that, when you're talking about making money, definitely always keep your vending machines invisible sight when you spawn in. So if someone comes in and they don't see your vending machine right away, maybe you got a building over here that says shop, like even shop signs don't help. If it says like a giant shop sign, I've missed those so many times because I'm kind of looking around for yellow, right? I'm not looking for signs. I'm not looking to read something. I'm looking for these things. Where are the vending machines? And then there's a giant shop up here that I got to look up at and see, or even over here, or over here. I don't care where it's at. So always try to keep your shops in visible sight. Make sure the yellow of your vending machines are visible as soon as the player spawns. If you care about making money, if you care about buying and selling. Now, if you just play with some friends and you don't really care and you're like, I don't, I just want my island to look good. I don't really care about that. My friends will go buy for me anyway. Then, then just disregard that. This is just really for like the average player that wants to make a bunch of coin off of selling and buying through their vending. The other way you can make a lot of money is make sure you also know your prices. I do maintain a price guide in document form that is pretty much updated daily. And I also do some videos on the price guide, just kind of tell you where the market's going after updates. I don't usually do those videos right away. So a lot of people have been like, hey, hey, DV, are you going to update that guide? And I'm like, I can't make that video until prices stabilize because if I did the video right away, you're going to be saying in a week from now, DV, why did you price that? Well, so weird. Why are shards so expensive? Why is the seed so expensive? Why is the seed still five to eight million on your guide? And I'm going to tell them, well, because back then when I did the video, I did it too soon. And so I like to generally, you know, do that video a little bit after, like usually about uh, half a week or so after the update comes out so that the prices have a chance to stabilize. And it's still kind of the wild west right now for this last update that just came out. So another cool thing, if you didn't know about this, a lot of you already do know about this, but if you didn't, it's kind of cool. So you can actually use this, especially for mobile, you mobile players you know i do care about you so here you can see these little conveyors i'm just going to do something like this um i'm just going to make a little loop for this example but these actually move you now it's been moving you for quite i think it's been over a week now that this has been happening maybe longer and i've been i've done lots of videos with this i've even done like an auto farm for mobile players for berries and it still holds true but you can basically sit here and if these were berry bushes or any other kind of you know harvestable thing you can use these to move your character automatically instead of having to do any kind of macro you just keep your mouse centered and you can have like, you know, maybe there's berry bushes here and you're just, maybe it's really, really long. So you bought a bunch of these and it goes, just surrounds your berry farm or even your onion farm. You can use for a lot of different purposes. So definitely check out conveyors and using them for autoing. So on top of this, another thing that's crazy cool about conveyors is your ability to make things compact. So, so I'm going to show you two things real quick. So first you can actually set down a conveyor like this, and then you can actually put totems on top of it. Um, on exception of crops, I've noticed that it doesn't work for crops for some reason. I have no idea why, but because when I tried it with crops, it just did not work. It did not, you know, transfer the items out of the crop totem. But it does work for something like this. So see how I just put the cold totem on top of the conveyor? That does work. That will work. So you have no problem with this. What's going to happen is it's going to auto farm the um, coal that drops. It's going to drop directly onto the conveyor. And it gives us an opportunity to stack even more totems. So what that happens is it frees up one spot out of this. So now we can have four on one conveyor, which is really, really unreal in my opinion, because before you wouldn't be able to do that. So you can see it's actually dropping it. It's pretty cool. Now, another thing that's really, really cool is to so see this daisy chain right here. You actually can do something like this where you have your blocks, right? Like, let's say I've got, you know, some dirt blocks out like this. Let's take that one away. We'll just make everything consistent. So you can do something like this and you can set up your autos 
like this. And I did show this in my last video. Earlier this week, I showed a video like this as well. Um, and it basically shows you how to consolidate stuff. So I don't actually have to put like conveyors or pads like this. I can just drop stuff directly in between these input and output chests, which is really cool because that, that means I don't have to have any connections here. I can just drop them straight in the middle of this. And you can do this for even like regular industrial chests as well. You just need to make sure things don't fall out because things will start falling out for here. So you're gonna wanna like, you know, protect the sides like this. You're just gonna wanna shell stuff so things stay in um, like that. And that way when they drop in, they stay in. The other thing you can do is take it a step further. So see these corners right here? I can actually add conveyors to the sides of these like this. So now we've got a full set of conveyors surrounding a daisy chain. So I did notice you can actually grow your own bamboo in your island. You can just plant it on the grass after you harvest it from the slime island. And you can see it grows and you can also put like coral on top of it if you want. So you can make like little funky plants. Um, I did get that from Plebeium on the official Roblox Islands Discord. So thank you Plebeian for that idea. And so you can put, you can also put blocks on these, which is kind of crazy. Look, so you can make like a little obby out of this if you really wanted to. See, I put some up there and it seems like, I think it's growing. I can't tell if it's growing with it or not. I need to test that to see if it's still growing with the object. Cause I don't think things can actually move. I think I'm blocking the growth by, by this. And so you might be able to make some like cool like little gels or something. So like imagine doing like a gel out of these things or something so you can't get through it. So you can make like a fence out of this. There's a lot of cool ideas that can actually come out of this, especially if you can, you know, just line these up. So I can put a whole row here of bamboo and make a fence. Another cool thing is if you didn't know this, you can actually break ore. I showed this in a separate video inside my crystallized iron video. If you haven't checked that out, definitely check it out. It is linked in the description, but you can do something like this where you have your totems, right? So there's like the coal totem right here. I can actually just break this and it'll give me the contents of whatever was in the ore without me having to farm the ore itself. So it's a huge time saver just using the block breaking technique. And you can use this for a lot of other things like breaking trees and it'll give you the, the wood out of it. Um, it will not, you know, if you try this on like totems, it will not give you the content. So if there's stuff stored inside your totem and you try to break that, it's not gonna give it. But you can see here, I'm breaking that and I just got a bunch of coal. I got two coal on that. And then you just replant the block and you're in good shape. So one thing I have been doing lately on top of this is you notice, you know, I've got this farm. I don't really have a whole lot in my island anymore. And the reason why is I actually use alt now for my different farms. If I can't join a public server, not only is it stressful because I'm in frustrating because I'm trying to maybe do a trade with someone or I just want to join a friend for a moment, or if I want to play with, you know, all of you, I can't, I couldn't do that before. So because of my island was always too big. And so what I've done was I just kind of said, you know what, it's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and make this my main trading um, account. So it's by basically my trading island. So that's why I've got the buy and sell here. I don't really have anything else here other than this mini farm and some prototypes. And the rest of my builds are actually on alt. So I've got an iron and coal alt. I've got a crystallized iron alt. I've got um, a food processing alt. I've got an onion farm alt. I've got, you know, basically a bunch of alts for all of my different purposes and uses. And that's a really, really good way for you to also avoid any despawn limits. So, you know, the problem before is when I used to have everything on the same farm, everything was competing against each other for despawn. And so like I would add the food processor to my main farm that already had onions going and stuff. And then the food processor items were despawning so I couldn't actually make cake. And it was really, really frustrating. So separating things out makes a whole lot of more sense. And on top of that, I can load super fast in public servers now. So I'd highly recommend splitting your accounts into alts if you can. Another great Easter egg here is the ability to type in honk. It's really minor, but if you type in honk in chat, it'll actually make like a goose sound. It's pretty funny. I'll turn it on. I'll, I'll do it for you real quick. So if you type in honk, I mean honk. And it's hilarious. It's so it's just a little simple little Easter egg that the devs put in. So you can go annoy everyone. You can go bug everyone and troll them with your honks. And you'll definitely get their attention from that. So another cool thing that uh, Snowhead on the official Roblox Islands Discord had posted is the ability to fly around your map or at least glide around your map using a particular avatar. So if you use the snowman avatar, or I think you can also use the penguin one. Um, I'm gonna go and show you it right now. I'm gonna switch over to the snowman. Let's go and reset. So I'm now the snowman. What you can do is you can do a one block path. Like I'll just do a small little path here. And it works best when you're in like shift lock mode, I've noticed. If you're in shift lock, you're in good shape. All right, so I'm gonna turn on shift lock and it, you basically, if you're, it's gonna always move you in the opposite direction of where you're, whatever you're facing. See how fast it is? 
So I'm not actually moving. I'm not even running right now. It just auto does it. It's pretty cool. It's kind of just kind of a funky looking, you know, it's just kind of a silly little glitch. So I'm going to go back out to the islands to give you a couple more tips. So while we're heading over here, I'm going to tell you something about the slime. So if you didn't notice, I actually have 606 slime island keys and you cannot buy these from adventure anymore. They used to be able to buy them from him and you can't do that anymore. And these items are actually rare now because of that, because you can no longer purchase these. These are actually became collector's items. So you can go and start selling these for tens of thousands. Um, I'm buying them for like four or 5,000 right now until I see the value actually start trading. I see some people trying to sell these for a million. I think they're just filling for the pricing and seeing what people are going to actually like pick up because some people are just kind of like, ah, whatever, maybe it's worth a million and they just kind of buy it just to buy it. They don't really understand what they're worth yet and what the supply and demand is yet. But if they're willing to buy it at that, then there's going to be some really, really lucky tra early traders until the price does settle. So, can, you know, keep a hold of your slime island keys, sell them if you want to, but they are going up in value. Now we're going to come over here. So now it, now if you are new to the game and you're like, DV, how do I, you know, should I buy some tomato seeds to start my crop? I want to create an auto farm. Um, what I would tell you is go get a sword because I think you need a sword still to be able to get into the, this island. I'm not positive if the weapon is still required, but you used to have to have a weapon to be able to get in these areas. Just make a wooden sword, but you don't need it for what I'm going to show you. But you can come over here and you can harvest these tomatoes. And while you're harvesting tomatoes, look for these things, the star fruits, because these are the most rare crop in the game. And if you get a seed, then that thing is worth not only millions, but it also help you while you're actually farming for these fruits. You can actually look for tomatoes and a lot of the times tomatoes just give you a ton of seeds. I got like a thousand seeds from doing this. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did hit that like button and smash the subscribe button if you're new. Um, if you do have any tips that I did not cover here, definitely also comment them in the comment section because I'd love to hear about your tips. Um, there's always going to be something that I'm going to miss and you all are awesome. So definitely share those inside the comments and I will see you all next time. Take it easy.